Welcome back to part two of this episode where I'm still working on this map. We're up in the northwestern corner. Um, as you can probably tell from the title of the video, uh, between the last video and this one, I've decided to name the nation or the continent Stormmark. No particular reason. I just like the name. Stormmark. Sounds like a place, um, a rough place, rough terrain. Um, untamed wilderness, that sort of feel. It sounds like an interesting place to live. Um, and especially since I might be actually playing in the campaign that my friend Burke is working on, uh, who this map is for, it's in my interest to make something interesting. So uh, I'll be working on some of the other names later for some of the uh, rivers, mountains, towns. Uh, I often do that last. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. All right, so as you might be able to tell, I've uh, fixed a couple things. The uh, I've, well, I fixed the camera angle, so hopefully that's a bit um, better. It's not upside down anymore. You can get a better sense of what it looks like. I've also added um, some smaller mountain ranges, foothills. Um, made the mountains spread out a little bit more. I feel it looks a little bit more realistic. Mountains don't just shoot up, at least usually not. Um, there's usually foothills or rough terrain around them. It gives your maps a bit more texture, because um, that way you don't imply that everything is just a plain unless it's a mountain, which is, of course, usually not the case. Um, you may have noticed that I've reverted my rivers back to uh, thick rivers, rivers that are two parallel lines. I kept debating with myself about this, but I like the two parallel lines. Um, it does make it look like it's you're closer in than before, but on the other hand, it really looks like a river, a lot more so than the single line, which can look like roads or political boundaries or things like that. These definitely look like rivers, and um, they read a bit quicker, I think. So I think I'll be sticking with them. Um, of course, it's making your own maps, so if you use whatever you like, and don't be afraid to experiment with different ways to draw things. Anything that looks good for your map, of course, will work. And what the important part is to make sure that any features really look like um, what you want them to be. You shouldn't be easily mistaken for something else. So you want to have any sorts of lines, like roads or political boundaries or rivers, to be drawn uh, distinctly so that they can be easily read. Okay, so let's stick with this corner of the map for now, and let's start working on uh, some foliage, forested areas, grasslands, uh, swamps, things like that. So I want this area over here to be fairly barren. Not a whole lot of interesting things happening over there. Fairly dry versus this side of the map. It's fairly verdant. So we should represent that by having uh, forests and other foliage. Let's find some good places to put some. Mm. Since the w the clouds and the wind tend to butt up against this mountain range, there's probably a lot of precipitation around here. So some forests around here seem appropriate. Um, again, a lot of this is about negative space. So you want to have the shape of your mountains, shape of your forests, um, leave interesting sh uh, shapes around them because you want people to have interesting places to explore. Mm, let's see, where do I want a forest? perhaps around the, along the side of this mountain range is fairly wooded. So let's work on that. Now there's a lot of different ways you can draw forests. People all do it different ways. Um, find a useful way. It's just like this. 
kind of create an outline. Whenever you're looking at the forest, the top or the side of the forest, you have these kind of bumps and triangles represent trees. Whenever you're any closer to the front, you add these straight lines. That's the tree trunks. Coming down. And then you can fill it in. with more layers of foliage in the forest. It gives you a pretty good impression of a forest. You can make it fairly dense so that it reads a little bit better. pretty foresty. Forest can go up into the mountains a little bit. Forests often do. Let's have the forest move this way. Mm, figure out a good shape. I'd like to have a fairly large forest in this part of the world. Around there. Forest all along the mountain range, perhaps, or maybe swinging out a bit. No, uh, let's not make it too big. We'd have our larger forest somewhere else. Okay, forest there. Perhaps some patches of forest here and there. Let's have a forest in here. Okay. A bit forested up here. and a larger forest down near the bottom.
going off in that direction. We don't have to finish it. It's just going off down that way. forest here and there. A little bit of a wooded coast near the coastline. pretty bare over here but now we have this long lake and maybe I'll add some trees around the lake that seems appropriate Whatever looks good. That looks good. Okay. Now, how about some human habitations? We need to figure out the main places where we want people. Now, as I said before, cities, towns, usually at points of trade, where they can get around quickly, where they can transport things, goods, um, people, news, um, between themselves easily. This usually means that they're at mouths of rivers, um, along rivers in general, intersections of rivers or forks in rivers, um, near fertile areas, places where there's lots of resources, so you can have mining towns. Um, but it's important to have a reason for your city to be where it is. Um, so let's think about this here. I think there's almost certainly going to be a city down here. The way I tend to draw cities is I draw a city as a colored in circle, a dot, if it's more of a village, and then I surround it with a larger circle, if it's something larger, um, more like a town, and then I put perhaps a star around it, if it's a city. Sometimes that represents a capital. Um, you can also do the two circles, for example, to make it a city. Uh, so this is a fairly large town um, along the mouth of this river, which makes sense to me. It also makes sense to me that we would have a fishing village or two out on this peninsula, which I like a lot, I think is interesting.
Let's make the one up here a larger town. Let's say there's perhaps really good fishing in this area. Those seem like good places. Another town up here on this coast. How about along the mountains? Let's put a town up here. Perhaps a mining town. We can send their things down the rivers. Um, let's have another one up here. Another large city at these major forks, or this major fork here. Uh, let's put it over here on this side. We can figure out how that's working out down there later on. There are definitely towns along this area. Here. And perhaps a little place over here by this forest. Seems like a decent spread to me. And what did we say about people up here at the top? That perhaps there's some people living up here. Yeah, let's have some isolated villages way out there people willing to brave the more extreme parts of the continent and as interesting places for our adventurers to perhaps encounter. Definitely more spread out, though. Nothing much in there. Let's keep that mysterious. Or put more uh, interesting, dangerous things in there later. Okay. I think I'm fairly satisfied with that. Now another important step is start connecting uh, the transportation up. So roads, uh, perhaps sea lanes, and things like that. Let's figure out where our major roads are going to be. Uh, this one doesn't have a major... Let's have that, keep that one fairly isolated. But this one is definitely going to need a road. I usually do my roads with dotted lines, like so. Like uh, I said before, it helps them read differently than rivers, which is important. Mm, these two definitely have a road connection. Remember, you don't have to connect everything up with roads. Some places are more isolated than others. Some places where you would almost always travel by sea or by river, so that you wouldn't necessarily have to have a, a road, although they would often have that. Coast Road, going down this way. Searching this forest. Let's 
keep this interesting and have two towns right here. Why are there two towns right there? I don't know. This is kind of like a great southern road traveling along the mountains. This road goes mostly straight down to the larger city in the south of this region, with part of it branching off and going that way. Likewise, the main road from here goes south. And then the connection here is through this forest. And who knows where the forest goes through the forest? Where the road goes through the forest. Sorry. We have nice crossroads there. Crossroads are always fun. Always have interesting opportunities there. Mm. In fact, there's usually cities at crossroads. I don't know if I want to put another one in there. Let's do a little bit of a revision. Let's have all of these roads meet at this city. this little town a convenient place for trades and for people to meet. <coughs> There's a bit of a ring here. It kind of rings around, which is interesting. Mm, all right, we're gonna have to connect up here. This road cuts right through the forest. It goes around to there. Roads through forests, of course, are always interesting. They're always a lot of fun. Now, as we can see, the mountain range kind of narrows somewhat here. So let's say that there is a pass through these mountains there. It's the only main path across this somewhat barren area. I 
it simply follows the course of the river. There. These areas remain isolated. I don't want to connect them up too much. They're not part of the grand scheme. They're um, perhaps independent cities, or perhaps they just never heard of the civilization over here. All right, now we can add a little bit more texture before we finish. Um, fairly flat, dry plains there. Um, add little sprigs of grass, maybe. Indicate this is something of a grassland. That livens it up a little bit. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is you have to leave room to put in uh, names of places later. But since we're doing this in pencil, we can always erase and figure that out as we go. Dry, dry. Mm. All right, we can put some grass on here. Who knows what's over here? We will find out next time. Thanks for watching.